Oh hi, I'm the heretic. We live in interesting times, to put it mildly. Tensions between racial groups is high. Society has fragmented into hundreds of niche groups with niche interests. People are polarized over trivialities such as movies. Turn on the news. There's another pile of broken bodies for some politician to stand atop of to espouse their political agenda. Trust in institutions, be they social, political, economic, or religious, is at an all-time low. Many are looking for moral leadership, but are met with betrayal and disappointment, feeding into the downward spiral of distrust and suspicion. Generally speaking, nobody thinks their politicians are being honest. Nobody listens to their clergy. Nobody believes that schools are actually educating kids. Nobody thinks going to university will get them a job, or that finding a job at all has any relevance to skill or competence. International tensions are also high, with nations undermining each other's economic interests left and right. China, for example, is undermining the petrodollar at the time of this recording, and every day the United States seems closer to war with North Korea. While we aren't in a situation of total war, like in World War II, there is a bleakness and malaise. No amount of good news about the stock market skyrocketing or positive job reports is able to remedy. Even without war, it still feels like we're trying to survive the next five minutes. Now what if I told you this wasn't unusual? We don't exist in a uniquely crappy time in history. In fact, we've dealt with it before. Okay, maybe not in your lifetime, but some historical perspective will put your current situation into context. You see, much like how the seasons change, spring gives way to summer, and then to fall and winter, so too does the cycle of history turn from spring to winter. Maybe having some perspective that this isn't the end of days will allow people to calm down just a bit. This cyclical theory of history is known as the Strauss-Howe Generational Theory, more commonly known as the Four Turnings Theory, or simply the Fourth Turning. I will be deriving most of my information from the book The Fourth Turning, published in 1997, as well as my own thoughts and anecdotes. But by all means, you should read it to yourself and come to your own conclusions. This theory models Western history, particularly American history, as following 80-year periods known as seculum in fourfold repeating cycles with recurring generational archetypes and societal moods that define each of the four segments in a seculum. Each segment is known as a turning and lasts for roughly 20 years. Each turning is defined by its mood and the characteristics of the generations within them which always occur in order. Secular spring, the first turning, is followed by secular summer, the second turning, all the way to secular winter, the eponymous fourth turning, which completes the seculum so that a new one begins, a new secular spring. The secular winter can be defined as society moving through a great historical gateway that answers significant societal questions clearly and concretely. Some examples include in the 1860s, the question of slavery was solved in the United States, and in the 1940s, America was able to establish itself as a world superpower. Now, I mentioned generational archetypes, but what does that mean? A seculum is a play, and every play needs actors. People hatched during a turning will, generally speaking, play certain roles during those turnings and adhere to certain characteristics and personality traits particular to their generational archetype. People hatched during the first turning will generally act a certain way, while those hatched during a third turning will act a different way. This is predictable, and how they interact with each other and the events within a seculum is what drives the cycle of history. As there are four turnings in a seculum, so too are there four generational archetypes. I mentioned that generational archetypes have certain characteristics. I'm not implying all within a generation think and act the same. These are general trends and attitudes that have more impact on society than the wide-ranging attitudes of individuals within that generation. Assuming everyone thinks exactly like everyone else within their generational archetype is ludicrous except baby boomers. They're all narcissistic megalomaniacs. Now, I should also define what the fourth turning theory is not. It is not destiny. Infinite interactions between people can produce an infinite number of outcomes, but they always conform to certain paths. The fourth turning is a probability, but it does not eliminate variability. In fact, it's this very variability that drives the cycle of history. 
Furthermore, the seculum is not history repeating itself. Each seculum is presented with a different grand societal challenge that, by the end of their fourth turning, is resolved with clear answers and obvious winners and losers. All unresolved questions remain unresolved until the next fourth turning. Now, history can repeat itself, and indeed, historical events centuries apart may mirror one another, but it is extremely unlikely a fourth turning will be needed to solve or reaffirm a question already answered in previous secular. We don't need another fourth turning to remind us that slavery is wrong, for example. Whatever your political affiliation, communist, social democrat, libertarian, I hope that this series will help you gain some historical perspective of where Western society is historically and where we're going. I can't tell you the exact timing of when the climax of the crisis will occur or what form it will take. I can only offer a retrospective to give you a sense of what is to come, how to stay safe, but most importantly, the assurance that we've been here before and we're gonna be fine. Can you hear me? We're gonna be fine! Eventually. This is only part one, a brief overview of the theory. In part two, I will be exploring the four turnings and the generational archetypes in more detail, listing their characteristics and helping you understand how the seculum works. In part three, I'll tell you where we are as a society in the seculum and what I think is coming based on available information and data. Finally, in part four, I'll offer some of my own personal thoughts and ideas of how to apply this knowledge of the fourth turning practically and what it means for your life. Yes, you. Questions? Comments? Critique? Was I clear in my explanation? Anything specifically going on right now you want me to contextualize in the fourth turning? Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.